Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Affordable Flyers. Court awards icon to American, German, Chinese bidder. Risen 916 ISV completes Atlantic Crossing heading for Oshkosh. Scale Birds updates followers on P36 development. And I'm your host, Holland Blee. Welcome to Airborne Affordable Flyers, our programming designed to help you get and stay in aviation as affordably as possible. Overseen by the editorial staff of the award-winning Sportplane Resource Guide, we know well the challenges faced by today's sport flyers, and we're here to help you enjoy flying to the utmost. Let's get into today's stories. Court awards icon to American, German, Chinese bidder. The long-awaited hearing before a Delaware bankruptcy judge has taken place, an Icon aircraft carrying over $170 million in debt was pretty much sold off for less than 10 cents on the dollar to SG Investment America for $15.54 million. The second-place bidder was none other than aviation entrepreneur Lyndon Blue, who offered approximately a quarter million dollars less. Blue is a highly experienced aviation business person with a resume that included time in the sport aviation kit industry and would undoubtedly have been an interesting and possibly more suitable buyer as far as the future of the sport plane program is concerned. SG Investment America is a recent subsidiary of Germany's Dirkhop Adler GmbH, but is owned by Shengong Group based in Shanghai, China, and from there the legalities get interesting. But regardless, as forewarned by other investors in the company, Icon is now a Chinese-owned enterprise, which they feared would result in the company being relocated there and the IP stripped from the original enterprise for unknown repurposing. The process appears to be pretty much over, leaving the future of the program in the hands of Yang Wu Chen, CEO of SG Investment America. After the break, Sonex High Wing Update. See it at Oshkosh. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. I think it's a very important thing to share the joy and love of flying. Our customers fly to remote places. They use our products to go places that are difficult to get to. Hearts has been an excellent partner for Whip Air, uh, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demands. And it is that shared experience and the joy of flying that brings us all back and charges all of our batteries up. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Sonex High Wing Update. See it at Oshkosh. Sonex has confirmed that their high wing prototype construction is underway, with the tail cone of the aircraft already complete. Their goal is to have the high wing prototype available for prospective customers to try the cockpit on for size at Oshkosh next month. Thinking ahead to Mosaic, the Sonex design team are expanding the design beyond the current LSA max gross weight at utility category, at least when using higher horsepower engines, such as the 130 horsepower UL Power UL350 IS that will be installed in the first prototype. LAA issues tech directive for certain R914 equipped aircraft. We're becoming big fans of the work we've seen conducted by the UK's Light Aircraft Association, which has just issued a mandatory technical directive. The MTD, MTD 03-2024, has been issued to introduce mandatory disabling of cabin heat on examples of the type fitted with Rotax 914 and derivative engines. This follows an in-service occurrence of carbon monoxide entering the cabin due to leaks from the exhaust system. The directive applies to operators of the AeroPro Eurofox, more specifically all models fitted with Rotex 914 engines or derivatives and cabin heat. Serious balloon action coming to Hungary this fall. The FAI tells us that over 100 hot air balloons from more than 30 countries around the world will color the skies of Hungary between September 8th to 14th, 2024, at the 25th FAI World Hot Air Balloon Championship, the biggest international competition in hot air ballooning. 
The sport's most prestigious competition will attract participants from more than 30 countries from all over the world, from Australia to Canada, including Japan, China, India, Brazil, and the U.S., one of the top countries of previous world championships, along with many other European countries. Helix Propeller is ready to tackle the U.S. market. A recent Aero TV feature from Sun & Fun 2024 features Helix Propeller's Nicholas Von Kummer bringing out some of their best work to Sun & Fun 2024 and making a splash in the U.S. market after building up a fan base abroad. Helix Propellers have been a staple in the European sport market for 30 years, so they've got plenty of experience in making a lightweight, strong prop that strikes the right kind of balance with an LSA. You can watch the full video on our YouTube channel. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Risen 916 ISV completes Atlantic Crossing, heading for Oshkosh. An amazing flight has just been completed with a unique and highly refined sport aircraft with what appears to have an extremely high degree of efficiency. Risen's Andreas Venturini and Alberto Porto committed themselves to an extraordinary personal and aerodynamic test with the announcement of their challenge flight from Italy to Oshkosh several weeks ago, and we had high hopes for its success, and those hopes have been exceeded. Of the stats we know of thus far, the overwater portion of the trip took some 11 hours, truing out at 165 knots and burning some 42 gallons for their efforts, leaving them with 8 gallons remaining. The numbers for this aircraft are incredibly impressive, and the 915-powered versions are pushing 200 knots in a big way. But the sleek design offers so little drag that it doesn't take a whole lot of power to demonstrate some extraordinary performance. This airplane is one of the top five on Jim Campbell's must-fly list for Oshkosh 2024, and we greatly look forward to flying it. If it flies as well as it looks, this could be a major player in the sport plane industry's future. Look for it at Oshkosh. After these messages, Scalebirds updates followers on P36 development. Welcome back. Scalebirds updates followers on P-36 development. Scalebirds tells us that the light fighter P-36A Hawk is coming along quite nicely, with the first set of tails, rudders, horizontal stabilizers, and elevators being built for early beta builders. Scalebirds is sending out the kit elements they have squared away, so builders can hit the ground running on their own builds. Currently, the team is focused on ramping up production in a way that will be resilient under larger loads with the crew focused on formalizing their drawing numbers, optimizing fixtures and jigs, developing build instructions, and identifying the most efficient builder path for buyers. A few more engineering and design changes are being added here and there as they learn more lessons from the prototype, particularly as they make more headway on building a retractable gear version. The light fighter will one day be much more than just a simple homage, with its bones acting as the foundation for a whole range of warbird lookalikes on a smaller scale. Off the bat, early additions will meander through the Tomahawk family, moving up to the P-40B Warhawk of Army Air Corps and Flying Tiger's fame, or a P-40E Kitty Hawk and its infamously oversized chin intake. Between the Curtises, about 90% of the airframe remains identical from one model to another, with most changes coming down to small details, fairings, and cowlings. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.